Tonight, I'm going to be teaching on this particular subject, the revealer of secrets. The revealer of secrets. As we open up, I'm going to ask that you would turn to 1 Chronicles 12 and 32, or you can also look on the screens. And um, if we could give a little help with the microphone, please, I appreciate that. 1 Chronicles 12 and 32, the scripture reads, And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. Everybody say, understanding of the times. To know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. Again, that was 1 Chronicles 12 and 32. The children of Issachar were a group of 200 men that King David appointed who were a united family unit that understood the times. Or they were not ignorant to what was happening around them. Jewish writers say that they were well-versed in astronomical and physical science. They appeared to be a very intelligent group who could help the military make better decisions for the kingdom. And as we look at the children of Issachar, I believe that Morningstar has been appointed to understand the times in which we are living in. There's a reason that God has given the knowledge, the gifts, the, the understanding to Bishop as he's preached, as he's taught us as a local body here, uh, a warning us of what's happening, opening up the minor, major prophetic books, the book of Revelation, and, and how it all ties together, and how it all tells us a story that he is coming soon. And we have confidence in the fact that we are like the children of Issachar, where we know the day and hour in which we live in. That that time is not going to catch us unawares where we're not going to be prepared when the trumpet of the Lord sounds or when something catastrophic, you know, goes on in the world. We're going to be ready. When COVID hit, it, it caught us by surprise. But guess what? We continued to fellowship the best we could. We continued to come to the house of God. And against every obstacle and every challenge and every law and, and group that was saying this should happen and, and maybe you shouldn't assemble, maybe you shouldn't praise and worship, I'm thankful that we understood the times in which we were living in where we were going to have church, we were going to fellowship, we were going to praise, we were going to worship, we were going to continue to move forward, we were going to pray God give us the strength, the wisdom and understanding in how to move forward, but Lord we know roughly what we've got to do and why don't we think Bishop, the Lord for Bishop, as he's giving, the Lord's giving him such an understanding and such an awesome gift as we are living, uh, as we are the church, uh, living, the church of the living God in these last days. First uh, Peter 3 and 15 tells us, and be ready always to give an answer. As a people that understand the times the scripture tells us that we should always be ready to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We've been placed on this earth to tell them about Jesus. We've been placed on this earth to example faith and to show it and to tell them what it's all about, what repentance, what, what baptism in Jesus' name is, what the infilling of the Holy Ghost, what, what a holy lifestyle is according to the scriptures. That is our responsibility to give them a reason, to give them an answer for the hope that God has placed inside of us. You can tell your neighbors, you can tell your friends and family, I used to be that person that was an unbeliever. I used to be that person that was bound by drugs or, or the things of this world. But there was a hope that God gave me through the gospel of Jesus Christ that changed my life. And when there is an, a question that is brought to you of what is it going to take for me 
to walk on streets of gold? What is it going to take for me to have peace in my family, to have that sound mind, to ha have the authority of God against every evil force in my life? We can tell them it is because of Jesus. Come to church, and I'm here to tell you that your life will be changed if you simply trust him with everything that you've got. Can somebody say amen? amen. As the children of Issachar, um, we must understand the day in which we are living in. And we should know what the church should be doing. In other words, we shouldn't be asleep. We, we, we shouldn't be in a state of confusion. And, and I'm going to say this, and I want you to note this, that with every major shift, God will warn his people. He gives us understanding and directs our steps. With everything that's happening in the world, and we're looking here at a major shift, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But we understand with every, whenever it involves the church, whenever it involves our family, I believe God is going to allow us to understand, one, the times that we're living in and how we are to proceed and how we are to move forward. And God will give us insight. God, God, God will pull us aside and say, listen, I want you to pray about this specific uh, situation. Or, or God will prepare us. Or how many times has something happened in your life where God prepared you for the exact situation that happened? I remember one time that Caleb was with, uh, I don't know who exactly, but he was at the lake and he was swimming out and he started drowning out there at the lake with some other brothers, I believe it was. And at that time, my mom just felt led to pray for Caleb. So I believe she got on her knees and began to pray, not knowing what was going on. But as she began to pray, I remember uh, Caleb recounting the story that he said that I got to a point because I think they jumped into the lake and I don't, I think he had jeans on and 90s. He probably had baggy clothes and I mean, it probably was not helping anything at the time trying to swim. And as they, they were swimming in, in a long place, all of a sudden he said, I had to give up because I had no more strength. And he said, as I just let go and, and I just started to go down thinking this might be it. He said there was something that was underneath his feet that gave him the strength just to push back up. And mom said, hey, you know what? It was at that time that I was praying for you. So you never know what God is just, if we're just in tune with God, he, he, he's going to put us in a position of prayer or praise or, or just to listen because I believe that God is always going to show us what we need to do in the time of crisis or when it affects our purpose, when it affects our destiny. Can somebody say Amen. A secular people are lost when it comes to the things of the Spirit. A secular people are lost when it comes to the things of the Spirit. Because you are as a children of Issachar, there are so many people around you that don't know what's happening. And when they're secular, there's not going to be any answers. There, there's going to be more confusion that they're going to be dealing with. So tonight the Lord wants to remind you, you have the Holy Ghost. You, you live according to the Holy Scriptures, and you are going to have the answer that they need. The people who don't serve the Lord, the people who don't have, uh, who are not born again of the water and of the Spirit, they're, they're going to be, uh, they're not going to know how to react to the crisis that uh, comes up in their life. But again, a secular people are lost when it comes to the things of the spirit or when it comes to major shifts that are happening in the world. You must have the answer, and you cannot live in a state of confusion. Tonight, you're encouraged to get your life where it needs to be, your families, your household, uh, your mind, your spirit, whatever it takes, because you should be that person, you should be that saint, that believer, that, that has a confidence in the word of God, that I know where to go, I know what to do, I know what decisions to make, because every step is ordered of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Every step is ordered of the Lord. Philippians 1 and 6 tells us this. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. The scripture tells us to be confident, be strong of this very thing that, that the Lord that, that started that work in you, he is going to finish it. 
There is an expected end in your life. For your family, for, for your finances, for your faith, for, for your health, for, for your betterment. For, there is a, a, a blessing that's in store for you. And be confident that God is going to allow you to finish the race. And he's going to allow you to do it handsomely. Can somebody say amen? In Genesis 41 and 56, the Bible tells us as we're talking about secrets, as we're talking about understanding the times and knowing what, what is going on, the Bible tells us that, and the famine was over all the face of the earth. Again, this is Genesis 41 and 56. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. So, the scriptures tells us that a global famine was on the horizon. The whole earth was going to be affected. So the Lord began to set in motion even before it would come to pass. Someone who would have the wisdom and somebody would have the know-how in dealing with this Darth by way of a set of dreams. As we look at the life of Joseph, we see that, and again, we're talking about a global famine that was about to hit the land, okay? So as we look at Joseph's life, we realize that it was no coincidence that Joseph's life pretty much began with a set of dreams. Everybody say dreams. These dreams that set him apart. In his youth, the Lord was already speaking to him concerning his future and even for his family. I personally believe that Joseph had a good idea of what his dreams meant. Yet, he would have to mature into them and he would have to be faithful to the God who gave them to him. So, his life begins with these dreams that have to do with him and the 12 tribes, his 12 heads of Israel. And we see that he, he had the dreams, but he had to learn how to manage them by trusting in God and serving the Lord from his youth to that point. So, and I want to take this note here that with the promise, there is a process that we must patiently go through. Especially as we look at Joseph's life. With the promise, there is a process that we must patiently, that's the tough part, patiently go through. Joseph, he was going to go through some challenges from his youth until the point that God gets him to where he sees the dreams mature. He sees the dreams full in his life. But he was going to have to be faithful to the process. The same thing with us is that there's a purpose, there's a destiny, there are promises that are determined over your life. But you have to be faithful unto God. You have to believe that you were put on this earth for a reason that's greater than just to serve your own needs or, you, you know, to live for yourself. And as you hold on to what God has spoke over your life, I believe if you're patient, you're going to see them come to pass. But we can't live a life of uh, of murmuring or a life of complaining. Uh, could you imagine if Joseph would have uh, begun to complain for every challenge that came against his life? For everything his brothers did to him, his father not really understanding, yet he continued to move forward. There was something beautiful about his life that we see in the end where, where he, he steps onto that stage, but then you look back and you realize everything that God allowed him to go through be encouraged, saints, with, with patience, endure every trial that comes your way. Because if you hold on, I believe that God is going to bless you and God is going to allow you to see what he has beautifully intended for your life. Can somebody say amen? amen. Again, again, when you understand there's a greater purpose to your life, you live different. Actually, not again. Actually, I thought that was a note that I already previously read. But that's not, so we're, we're going to go back up a little bit on my notes. <laughs> Genesis 39 tells us that not only is Joseph in Egypt, but he's also in a prison. The Bible calls it not just a prison, but he calls it a dungeon. I don't know if you've been at a spiritual dungeon in your life, but it's, it's not a good place to be. But prior to this all, 
His brothers tried to kill him when he was young. And you know the story that he was sold into a foreign land, but I believe he held on to the dreams the Lord gave him. He held on to them. And now I'm going to say that note that I said earlier. When you understand there's a greater purpose to your life, you live different. When you understand there's a greater purpose to your life, you live different. This will call it, cause a young person to be alone for a while, not, not depend on the group to affirm and to make them feel good about certain things in their life. But when you understand there's a greater purpose in your life, it's going to cause you to walk in peace and joy and, and to trust the Lord with, with all that you have. So, again, we're talking about Joseph. We're talking about this global famine that was about to hit the earth and, and, and the setup that would take uh, Joseph to get to that place. Now, he was falsely accused of assaulting his master's wife. And in this place of confinement, a butler and a baker have an unusual dream. So Joseph interprets both of what they each saw upon their beds. As he makes sense of their abstract nightmares in time, the butler was restored back into Pharaoh's house, and the baker was sentenced to the gallows. According to the dream, everybody say dream, and its interpretation. So, then it gets interesting because, you know, Joseph's in prison, uh, away from his family, accused uh, of doing something he didn't do. He helps the butler and the baker out by interpreting their dreams, and yet he was forgotten about. But as the, I believe that as the baker was back in Pharaoh's court, the Bible tells us that Pharaoh has a dream, and he has a troubling dream. And in Genesis 41 and 8, it tells us, And it came to pass in the morning that, speaking of Pharaoh, his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt. Again, this is Genesis 41 and 8. And all the wise men thereof, and Pharaoh told them his dream. But there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. There was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Again, the secular is not going to make sense of when God is speaking. Those who don't believe in God are, are, are not going to understand with these shifts, these, these changes that are happening around them. Yet sometimes God speaks to them so that we can give them the answer. So that we can tell them this is where you got to go. This is what you have to do. And I'm here to tell you that there's a day coming <laughs> That things are going to happen, that we're going we're gonna to have to have that insight. We're going to have to have the passages to direct them to. We're going to have to have the counsel. And guess what? Uh, uh, I, know, I understand you can't sleep and, and, and there's a troubling in your spirit. And there's going to be people, I believe, that are going to reach out to you and say, listen, I've had this dream. I've had this experience. I've had this encounter. I don't know how to deal with it. But you're going to have to be the one that says, guess what? I have the Holy Ghost. I have the answer. I have a name above every name that when we call upon that name, things are going to happen in your life. So Pharaoh has his dream, and the baker recounts the interpreter in prison, or Joseph, and he remembers, oh, my God, there was this guy who was in prison who he... He interpreted my dream. So Genesis 41 and 14 tells us, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily. <laughs> you got you to gotta see how this is funny with, with what's happening. They brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple notes here that you can look at this and you can see how it applies to your own life and your own situation as a believer. Um, they will let you rot in your prison until you can help them. <laughs> they will let you rot in your prison until you can help them. How many times have you testified, told them about Jesus, and I don't want to hear about your Jesus, I don't want to hear about your church, I don't want, then all of a sudden, you know, 
they get a little spookiness happening in their house. And then, oh, my God, I need someone who, who prays. I need somebody who, who calls on the Lord. And, and all of a sudden, the Bible says that they, that they got Joseph, hastily brought him out. Man, you forgot about him that whole time. But all of a sudden, you bring him out quickly. Why? How, how come you're calling on him in, in that manner? So their dilemma seems to refresh their memory. I have LOL on my notes. I didn't put that there. <laughs> their dilemma seems to refresh their memory. So you're going to have to be in that place where, you know what, sometimes, you know, you preach and teach and tell them, hey, listen, come on, you know, you, you got to change your ways. But, and, and you know how, how real tough they are, real mean they are. But I'll tell you what, man, let a demon got run through their house and all of a sudden they will call you, they will apologize to you, they will bow down before, they don't care, they just need help. And in their dilemma, they're going to remember your name. So you have to be ready. You have to be the one. You know what I'm talking about. There's times when drug addiction will, will find a household or, or find your family member's children and, and they're a mess. And, 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 and when they would oppose you talking about Jesus, now they're like, come tell my son, tell my daughter about Jesus all you want. I just need them to be delivered of what they're going through. We understand what's happening in the spiritual realm. We, we, we have power and authority that God has given us. And it's time for the church to step up and be the church that God has intended for us to be. Can somebody say amen? amen. We must be the church that God expects of us. So the Bible tells us that Pharaoh is brought or Joseph is brought before Pharaoh. And in Genesis 41 and 15, the scriptures tell us and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I, I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. He says, It's not in me. We can't understand the times and seasons God has put it into motion on our own. But today, when we have his spirit in us and we live according to what he's placed in us, God allows us to be as the children of Issachar to understand the times and to know what to do. So he says, look, it's not on my own strength, not your own ability we're not up here bragging that, that we can cast demons out and we can heal people by laying on of hands. But it's God that's in us when we humble ourselves before him and we trust him, when we work according to his word, God allows us to do these things because it is him doing the work and he gets the glory. Can somebody say amen? amen. So Joseph can't find a magician or his wise men to interpret this troubling dream, or I mean Pharaoh, excuse me, that Pharaoh has. And because, because Pharaoh doesn't have an answer and he's troubled in his spirit, the Bible tells us that he finally has this encounter with Joseph and the dream is given. Joseph interprets the dream. And then he tells them how to, to move as the interpretation is given. Because of Joseph, a seven-year famine is averted because God gave a dream to a king, yet a prisoner who was an interpreter prepared for this catastrophe. He was in prison at that time, yet he had to be called up in order to make the change in the kingdom. So, again, Pharaoh didn't know what to do. So, Joseph was able to interpret the dream. I believe that we're entering into a time, into a season... That I don't know what's on the horizon, but you're going to have to be prayed up. You're going to have to have a word in you. You're going to have to be confident in what God's given you. Because I know that we're entering into a place where we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But whatever happens, we should be ready. We shouldn't be filled with fear. We shouldn't be filled with confusion. But 
as Joseph was resolute in the fact that he's been thrown in a pit and he's, he's been thrown into prison and he's been accused of all these things, yet the Bible says that he continued to minister to those around him. He was confident. And finally, God promotes him to second in command in Egypt because he believed God for what God had put into his spirit. And he was able to interpret, and I think that's the part that we really need to understand right now is that we need to be sensitive enough to when we see a situation happen that there has to be discernment in us according to the word of God, and we have to have the spirit of God to see it for what God wants us to see it as. My bishop has wore himself out telling us the, uh, of what day we're living in. It's time for us to step up. It's time for us to to put our nose in the book and to read for ourselves. You know what? I've got to be prepared for whatever is happening ahead. Above all, we must be saved. Above all, we must be ready. Above all, we are going to take our family with us to heaven. Above all, we have to have an understanding heart. Not only was Pharaoh struggling with dreams that he had, in his life, but we also read in the book of Daniel, the second chapter, that the Bible tells us that King Nebuchadnezzar has these dreams. And just like King Pharaoh, he calls his wise men, his council, his, his soothsayer, his magicians, the Chaldeans. And he tells them, listen, I had a dream that was so troubling, it's not allowing me to sleep. Yet... I, I don't even know what the dream was. I can't even remember it. But yet, I know it was so intense that I can't, I can't have peace from that point forward. So this king that God had set up, he, he talked to his council. And their job was to make sure that they would handle these issues. So he tells them, I need you not only to give me an interpretation, but I need you to tell me what I dreamt. dreamt. And... They looked at him, and they tried, and, and, and I'm sure they attempted, but they said, listen, there's nobody that can tell you what you dream, dreamt, and also give you the interpretation. Again, the, the, the secular never has an answer for the spiritual. Daniel 2 and 10 says, the Chaldeans answered before the king, again, Daniel 2 and 10, and said, there is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. But we know how the story goes. Finally, uh, because the decree went out for all the wise men to be slain because they couldn't give him an answer. Daniel finds out. He goes with the three Hebrew boys and he begins to pray about the situation. And God gives him the dream. God gives him the interpretation. Daniel 2 and 47 says this. Daniel 2 and 47. The king answered unto Daniel and said, and again, this is after that. Daniel gives him the dream, gives him the interpretation. He tells him what was happening. Uh, the king answered into Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings. And here's the part where this was the seed thought for everything. And a revealer of secrets. Your God. None of my people, my wise counsel, my, my spiritists, the... They, they could not figure it out. But your God is a God of gods. He's a Lord of kings and the, a revealer of secrets. Seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king that he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Again, a dream took place. They couldn't figure it out. Those who didn't believe in God, yet it was a man of God, somebody who could uh, interpret, somebody who, who the Spirit of God will fall upon them and give them the, the understanding. It took a Daniel to step up and say, listen, God can reveal 
those things which are secret. And, and not only is God telling us that he's going to let us know, I believe, what, how to prepare for the future if things are to happen. But what God is, I believe God wants us to understand is that he'll reveal secrets. He'll, he'll reveal mysteries that we've been asking for God to show us. We have an advantage because we trust in the word of God and we have his spirit. So as young people or saints of God or family or you're, maybe you're, you're a parent that's raising uh, your family, he is a revealer of secrets. If, if, if there's confusion, if there's, if, if there's something that, that causes you to be unsure about a, a direction or a decision or how to move forward or what you're to do, know this, that God is a revealer of secrets. And, and, and God will reveal to you. If you just ask him, God will give you the answer that you need. Instead of trying to figure it out on your own, instead of trying to go it the hard way, why don't you just trust him and say, Lord, I, I need to know some things that, that I know that maybe you've held in store for a particular season or a time. But God, I trust you just as you revealed to Joseph, just as you've revealed to, to Daniel, just as you've revealed to these men of God and, and you exposed and, and, and revealed and interpreted dreams. God, allow me to dwell in that place where I can understand the secret things that you have intended for the church of the living God and also for my life personally. Deuteronomy 29 and 29 says, The secret things, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. You know, truth in Christ Jesus, it, it is a secret that God will reveal to those who just simply want to know more of him. But it also, it'll be a snare or it'll be a parable to those who do not want to know the things of God. But I'm so thankful that God has put in Bishop, God has put in Morningstar, God has put in this pastoral staff a desire to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, to understand the secrets of, of our God. And, and, and when, you, when you dive into that place... God is going to show you things that will blow your mind. God, God will answer questions that you have. God will reveal things that he has purpose for your life. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. Psalms 25 and 14 tells us, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. To have that reverence for God. To, to be in a place of awe where, Lord, instead of questioning everything, that every move God makes, to, to humbly come before him and say, Lord, I have that reverence for you. I have that respect for you. And even though my situation may not be the best, I mean, we can look to Daniel who was captive by the Babylonians. And we can look to Joseph who was in Egypt, taken away from his family. We could look at these people who were in captivity. Yet in their captivity, they interpreted dreams. In their captivity, they began to help those that were around them. In their captivity, in, in their prisons, in their pits, and in, in all these challenges in their life, they continued to operate under um, the will of God. And this is what we need to do in our life and need to understand that, that when, we, uh, when we trust him, and we understand that the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Amen. Ecclesiastes 12 and 14 says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Again, this isn't just for the prophetic. This isn't just to know what's going to happen or, or, or to understand just what's uh, around the a horizon, yet this is also to understand there, there are secret things that God needs to reveal to us. There are things that are happening in your house that you need to pray, God, I need you to give me revelation to raise our children, some of the friends they have, some of the decisions they make, some of the attitudes, some of the things that they're going through. We need to, Lord, I need you, I need you to reveal secret things. You know some of our young people are sneaky. <laughs> Can I get an amen from a parent in this place? And we got some sneaky young people in this place. 
But you know what? We just need to pray, God, reveal every secret. Reveal to me the things that I need to know. Man, we would bring the wrong music into the house, and somehow Caleb would hide it in these crooks and crannies of the house, and my mom would walk over there, and she would just put her hands in that area, and <laughs> what CD is this? And Caleb's like, how did, how did mom find that? We couldn't get away with anything in our house. So mom was praying. You no, know, she was praying this passage, but she was praying this in spirit that any secret thing, my God, anything in dark would be brought to light. And because of that, we're praising and worshiping the Lord today. Some of you parents, you need to pray that God reveal those secret things. Not just to reveal those things, but to give you the wisdom on how to deal with them. As Issachar, they, they didn't have just understanding of the times, but they knew how to move. They knew how to make the right decisions. This is, this is the wisdom that we need in our house. Romans 6 and 25 tells us, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. That secret has been revealed to us. And we're walking in the authority of the gospel. We're, we're walking in the power of the name of Jesus. We have, it, the, the things that the angels have looked into, we've been able to experience. I, I just want to encourage you that you have every opportunity to walk in a realm that is beautiful, that is wonderful, that is spiritual, and it is of God. And with the right balance, God is going to allow you to Walk on this earth to run your families, to continue to move forward, and he'll bless you. Uh, in closing, Psalms 91 and 1 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I heard many of you quoting that. It's a beautiful scripture to put in your spirit. But he that dwelleth in the secret place, God allow us to be in that secret place. And when you're in that secret place, He's going to reveal his mysteries. He's going to reveal things to you. This is the attitude that you need to have. This is the decision you need to make. This is where you need to move. This is how you need to cover your house. This is how you need to, to move forward in your marriage. This is, this is how you need to trust the Lord in that secret place. If you would stand with me. It's the private things of the Lord. This is what the Lord gave me in prayer this morning. It's the private things of the Lord. Every say, everybody say the private things that have prepared us for public blessings. So when you're in that secret place, when you're in that private place, God is going to speak to you like only he can. But you have to make sure that you have that private, intimate time with him. That he begins in that place to reveal to you secrets begin to speak to you mysteries, and begin to talk to you in a way that's going to privately uh, bless your life, but then it's going to spill over into a pub, the public arena. Can somebody say amen? amen. I want